Okay, isopentyl acetate, C7, H14, O2. Compound responsible for the scent of bananas can be produced commercially. Bees release about one microgram. compound when they sting. In order to attract other bees to join the attack, how many molecules of isopentyl acetate are released in a typical bee sting? How many are atoms of carbon are present? So when bees sting, they, re they release 10 to the negative 6 grams of this molecule when they sting. And the question is how many molecules are released in the sting and how many atoms of carbon are present. So let's try working that out on paper. Even before that, let's try to get a prediction. What can you predict about the answer here? Sure. There should be a large number of molecules, because again, we're, we're dealing with an ordinary sized size here, but well, that should have lots and lots of molecules in it. So we can predict this is going to be a very big number. And what can we predict about the answer to this question? Good. Bigger or smaller than the answer to the first question. have more of? Molecules or atoms? Usually. Yeah. Atoms. That's right. So should this be bigger or smaller than this answer? Okay, that's right. Because remember that the atoms are part of the molecule. Mm -hmm. The atoms are part of the molecule, while you'll have many parts for just one molecule. So we would expect this to be big and this to be bigger. 
Okay, well now let's try to work that out quantitatively. Now we actually, so what are going to be our starting units here? One microgram. Now we could work with micrograms, but micrograms are kind of weird. We're not used to that. They gave us an alternative that we could start with. What else could we start with is, is, besides the micrograms? One times 10 to the power of minus 6 grams. That's right. I, maybe I didn't write, really explain this very well, but what I meant to say is that one microgram is the same as 10 to the negative 6 grams. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to start with the micrograms. We can just start with the... And this is grams of what? It's grams of C7H14O2. So we could do the problem in micrograms, but all we would do is, if we started with micrograms, our first step would be to convert into grams. Well, we don't need to do that because they gave us the number of grams. So we can just start with that. Now, let's start using a technique I should have mentioned before, but I forgot. It's not good enough to write down the units for each step. You also have to write down the substance for each step. So notice that I did not write down 10 to the negative 6 grams. I wrote down 10 to the negative 6 grams of C7H14O2. So from now on, we need to always try to write down not just the units, but also the substance that the units are referring to. Okay? Good. Yes, you're right. Good. Okay. Now, one step that I think you might have skipped was writing down the target units. So let's write down our target units. What are our target units here? Good. Except remember that from now on, we have to always write the substance. So this is molecules of what? Right. So we need units and the substance. That's our target units. So we should have done that here too. What's the substance here? Okay. Well, all right. Now we were having some trouble with this. Well, yeah. So um, what does go up here? 130 grams of this, uh, of this is, is equivalent to what? Number of molecules. What is this equivalent to? So. Moles. Moles. Yeah. So, moles of what? C7H14O2. How many moles? 7 plus 14 plus 2. Ah, so I confused you a little bit there. Remember that you got this number from the periodic table, mm -hmm. right? What does the periodic table tell you? Well, the periodic table tells you that one mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams, mm -hmm. and one mole of hydrogen has a mass of 1 grams, mm -hmm. and one mole of oxygen has a mass of 16 grams. Mm -hmm. 
So um, in this case, um, so the, the, the periodic table tells you the mass of one mole of something. So this 130, um, so let's see here. So here we were assuming we had seven moles of carbon and 14 moles of hydrogen and two moles of oxygen. So how many moles of the molecule were we assuming we had? Well, weren't we assuming we had one mole of the molecule? Because one mole of the molecule would give you uh, seven moles of carbon, 14 moles of hydrogen, and two moles of oxygen. That's, remember, that's what the periodic table gives you. The periodic table gives you molar masses. The periodic table gives you molar masses. It gives you the mass of a certain number of moles. So how many moles should I put on the top here? One. 